Hey, <clears throat> have you ever rubbed your feet against the rug? You build up a static electricity charge and you touch the doorknob on a metal doorknob on a door. You get a little spark. <laughs> Yow! It gets, to, it gets to a point where it gets kind of annoying. And it's usually on a cold winter day. Remember that? On a cold winter's day. Oh, here's, here's Hudson. Hi, Hudson. This is my co-host and good friend, floor director, Hudson LaRue. Are you going with us out to, out to Oregon City, the county recorder's office today? Going to go with us? Yeah, you check out the floor. If anything drops on the floor, I'm sure you'll find, you'll find it. You'll know about it. You take care of it, okay? You can eat it if it drops on the floor. Okay. <laughs> Hudson's a rescue dog. He rescued him from a kill shelter. <clears throat> he owes his life to me. You know, the Indians back, back when, you save a man's life, that's a death warrant. Yeah, you, 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 you interrupted his journey. By saving his life. He interrupted your journey by saving your life, didn't that? Yeah, and then he, that makes him your slave. <laughs> My slave. <laughs> yeah, so he'd spend the rest of his time on there trying to kill you. Pay you back. I'll get you for that, for saving my life. <laughs> Where was that? Anyway, yeah. I killed a man once by zobbing him on the ear with the static electricity charge I rubbed off on my feet on the on the rug there. <laughs> we have static electricity warfare. Well, you ever wonder where that electricity comes from or how that develops? What's the mechanics behind that? What's the physical chemistry, the dynamics? How does that affect the vital force? <laughs> Oh, jeez. You know, I don't think we pay much attention to some of these things, these dynamic issues, this fourth phase plasma state that we're in. You know, we, we tend to the, the hard stuff, the molecular, and then when it turns to liquid, we know all about that, drink some of it. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes a gas, mm -hmm, and that's it. No, that's not it. It doesn't end there. There's another phase. There's a fourth phase. You know, earth, water, Wind and and what's the last one? Come on, come on, it's fire, right? Well, there's four physical states of matter too, or at least classical physical states: solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Plasma, plasma. You get back in this house, plasma. Don't think you're an orphan, but it's treated like an orphan. The way we treat plasma is treated like an orphan. It's not considered much in science. The homeopathic remedy is basically lightning in a bottle. It's fourth phase medicine, fourth phase chemistry. This is why they can't find a molecule in it and don't think there's anything to it. It's because it's been ionized at the sixth decimal dilution through molecular dissociation. That's what makes the homeopathic remedy and it wipes everything clean off the board. Right now, everybody thinks that these reactions that we get are done on a wet chemistry basis. That's molecule to molecule bumping into each other. It's all this impact going on like it's some billiard ball game. You know what I'm talking about? Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's retarded. The whole thing is retarded. Jesus Christ. So it takes an idiot like me to step over the plate, take everybody's slings and arrows and rotten apples and stuff like that, get through it. What do I get for it? I get nothing at all. Nothing. Nothing. I'm left a poor, broken man like Tesla. <laughs> yeah, feel sorry for me. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. But how does it apply to static electricity charge building up in your feet? When you rub your so stocking feet against the rug floor on a cold winter day and Touch the doorknob, metal doorknob, bzz, or your little brother's ear. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
That apply is an example of the electrical charge that builds up with rubbing. Hahnemann made a note of this back in his organon, that the charge of, an of the homeopathic remedy comes from friction within the remedy that's induced by succussion. And what is so elegant about this, this revelation of Hahnemann, who was, was a genius like you, you're a genius, dog genius, Hahnemann figured this out, that it was an electromagnetic phenomena, electromagnetic chemistry. But he really didn't have the terminology or the equipment to really prove it with. But now we do, and we have. We've actually proven the homeopathic remedy electrodynamically, using instrumentation and hard tests. So one of them, one of the probably the most in-depth analyses of the homeopathic remedy was done by Rustam Roy and a team of scientists, including William Tiller, the famous William Tiller, the head of the Stanford Physics Department. Roy was the head of the uh, Penn State Department, and he included on his team Rick Hoover, was, who was a uh, presumed associate of Roy's at Penn State. And the inimitable, beautiful, wonderfully intelligent doctor, Indian chiefess, Iris Bell, MD, homeopath. One of the great homeopathic minds of, of the history of home, homeopathy. Iris has done, excuse me, Dr. Bell has done numerous physical assays of homeopathic remedy, including the gas discharge test, which I gave them. I don't know if she knows that or not, but I slipped it to uh, Gary Schwartz, who worked on the gas discharge test, which is actually a plasma discharge test using curing photography to photograph the, the um, plasma coming off a homeopathic drop of water. You may have seen this in my blogs every now and then. So anyway, Roy and his stalwart team analyzed the, uh, this whole th thing about the homeopathic remedy from a material sciences basis. And one of the things that Roy, well, first of all, their basic conclusion was structuring of the water molecules, which we already kind of knew that. I mean, if you delve into the restructuring, I should say, it's just changing the structure of the water molecules that imitates the solute. But anyway, we, I was gonna say we already knew that because that uh, was held probably since the 60s from an NMR test by Smith and Stevenson, Smith and Berkey, Berkey and Smith. I don't know, Berkey I think was one of the guys that did the first NMR test and at Hahnemann College in Philadelphia. And they concluded that there was some kind of change in the hydrogen bond structuring of the, sol or the solvent the water solvent. And, uh, but they didn't take it much farther from that. Roy already got into this whole structuring business and came to the conclusion that the properties of, of chemistry, of a particular material properties of something, is determined by its structure. And he, as an example, he would use the, uh, he used the uh, example of carbon, which is graphite is carbon and it's the soft one of the softest elements the softest metals that we have very soft and slippery and carbon is also the basic element of a diamond which is the hardest element there is the hardest material there is so how is it that that a molecule the carbon molecule can be the hardest thing, the softest thing. That's because of its structuring. And so they leveled this on the hydrogen bond and structuring of the water molecule in, in water to its properties of the solute, or somehow adapted that, that by imprinting on the, uh, on the solute. Well, this is, had been challenged by people like Colhoun, Professor Colhoun of... Uh, 
forget what college he was in, some podunk university in England. And Randy and Parks, Robert Parks, and these other geniuses who reporting to know something about science said, well, the water molecule can't structure because of its, um, the, the breaking point of its, of the hydrogen bond disintegrates or breaks within a trillionth of a second or something like that. So it can't structure. Well, that's, that's pretty good in theory, I guess. But if you look at the facts, water does structure at liquid temperatures in the view of cat clathrates. And this is a point I made in my lecture at Cavendish University, Cavendish Lab at Cambridge University in 2010, which the lecture is on, on the um, internet if you want to look it up. Supermolecular chemistry of the, bio, of the homeopathic remedy. Which I lay out the fact that the, the evidence shows differently. It shows you're wrong. Water does structure at liquid temperature. You can see that in, ice, in electric ice, the clathrate, crystalline, the crystallization of water. Well, I, brought, I was bringing this up basically in those in those days, and I was getting a lot of a lot of being attacked for it. It's been insane. You're crazy, crazy. There's the evidence. You can look it up for yourself. Don't, don't, don't listen. Don't believe me. Okay, we won't. <laughs> and they didn't. So anyway, one of the, the other point that Roy made was that the succussion phase of water, of the homeopathic remedy, and going through dilution, between dilutions, it's succuss. It's, excuse me, I shouldn't be doing that on screen. <laughs> It's beating, it's be, <laughs> it's beating the, it's beating, it's beating on, not beating off. It's beating on the like a the Bible, take a fairly firm surface and beat the bile containing the homeopathic solution between dilutions against the Bible to supposedly agitate it and mix it up. But Roy said this this, this succussion phase would induce. 10 kilobars of pressure, 10 atmospheric kilobars of pressure within the homeopathic remedy. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, that's expressing, that's defining a nuclear event, a nuclear event within the homeopathic succussion phase. Now go back to rubbing your feet on the carpet. <laughs> and when you see these nuclear events, they do involve a huge amount of electromagnetism. Duh, right? I mean, we all know that, except for Einstein, he didn't believe it. <laughs> gotcha on that one. Anyway, I had to slip that in there, that this is the piezoelectric effect. You know, the piezoelectric effect that when you mechanically induce mechanical pressure on a material, especially some materials like silica and water, which just coincidentally share the same atomic structure or molecular structure, atomic structure, tetrahedral structure, a little tetrahedron which is the basic element of the universe structure. The basic elemental structure is tetrahedron. And when you pressurize these things, they emit energy. This comes back to Einstein's old wheeze about energy and mass, that E equals MC squared, that as mass decreases, energy increases. So you have this huge outpouring of energy when you're decre decreasing the amount of ma mass in something. And in the dilution process, hydrolytic molecular dissociation is decreasing the mass of the solute by splitting it. And when it splits it, it releases all this energy. And when you put it under pressure, it's like it, it becomes exponential. It just shoots out all this energy and they detected this energy a la Montaigne, Luc Montagnier recorded this energy, as did 
Ben Venice. Ben Venice came up with a patent for the equipment that did it. And Ben Venice determined that this energy was detectable outside of the bottle. And that this energy would, could be tra- to the point of transmitting it to another, bo- inside another bottle. You know, this is, this is teleportation, teleportation of gene structure. Yeah, I guess it is. In structure, in its, in its energetic structure. So there you got it. I had to get that in there. This is the piezoelectric effect. Piezoelectric effect saying thank you very much for watching today. My co-host has given up and go, it's going to bug somebody else. <laughs> He'll be fired for this. So um, anyway, I'd like to thank you. And and if you could help me, I'd really appreciate your help. You know, I'm your friend, your best friend, your only friend. You listen to me and you'll hear some things you probably never heard before. I got more where this comes from. I got a ton. I don't have enough time to do it all. But I think I think I have something to impart and I have a vision, and I have a grand grand design that what this can do for humanity, for our immunization of people. It's basically what this is leading to. So I could really use your help in getting the word out. And if you do, I'll be your friend, your best friend, your only friend, and you'll be my friend, my best friend, and my only friend. So please share this with people. Hit the share button down at the bottom underneath the screen. Tell some other people to watch. If we get some other people to watch, I might be able to have a sandwich tomorrow and take Hudson for a walk. Spend a little more time on the planet, breathing its sweet air and helping people and loving people like you. So please, please help me. Distribute the John Bank Journal video, <laughs> please. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. See you next time. I love you. I do. I really do.